today we are focusing on the rule of law. We are focusing on the rule of law. I must say that before we took public office, we made it very clear as we campaigned that one of our cornerstone programs when we take public office will be to restore the rule of law. Restore the rule of law, which got damaged over years. Lawlessness became the order of the day. And we committed that upon assumption of office, this will be a critical element for us to bring back normalcy in society. To give citizens their legal rights to conduct their businesses, but within the law. So today I'm emphasizing we as the UPND New Dawn government is emphasizing that it does not matter what the challenges stand in our way. We will reinforce the rule of law. It does not matter what challenges we face. It does not matter who is involved. It does not matter what propaganda goes on by whoever. This government will reinforce the rule of law. Enforce, reinforce the rule of law. In its integrity, not partially, but in its integrity, we know the importance of maintaining the rule of law. How else do you govern society if it's not by the rule of law? How else do you assure fairness to society if it's not by or through the rule of law? How do you check excesses of human beings if it's not through the rule of law? And no one is above the law. Once the law is transgressed, it triggers processes that should follow. Any law, not selectively, but holistically, any law that is transgressed, the processes thereafter trigger. And when that happens, we must not call it by different names. It is simply to observe the rule of law. Let me refer to the airport saga. And I do this knowing that judicial processes may have kicked in already. But I will stay with principles and not interfere with the processes that the country chose will be the way in which we conduct ourselves. I want to start by saying it is necessary to appreciate the work of the law enforcement agencies so far. DEC, the lead organization, ACC, Zambia Police, other agencies that are involved in enforcing the rule of law. I want to appreciate, we want to appreciate the work done so far. We also want to commend you for the openness. I must admit, we did create a gap in providing information to the public 
because the public need to know what is going on as much as it does not jeopardize the investigations. We don't want to leave a vacuum because a vacuum leads to speculations in windows, unnecessary in windows. But I want to commend SOFA, DEC, and your colleagues for when the issue of what exactly is going on arose. The plan has been released. It's gone. So we all read, we all heard. You took the media there. Transparency. And that was the right thing to do. We should have done it right on Monday. Right on Monday. Today is Friday. We did it on Thursday. It would have been better to have done it on Monday. Maybe Monday was too early. But at least Tuesday. But we commend you for taking the media. And by taking the media, any media organization, I believe, was free to go to the airport. The media were shown the plane or planes involved. Others were saying, no, there are three planes. No, there are ten planes. I think the media then, who is basically the transmitter of information for consumption of the public, were able to see for themselves that the number of the planes, I understand these two, are there. But you see how the world works. Just days or hours earlier, people went to the media, again using the media, to say the planes have gone. I myself, I was in Angola and was sent a footage of the plane leaving. Now, I don't know which plane was leaving. But how do you kill that story? Transparently take the media. So, Dirk, we commend you for that. Our advice next time is moving quickly to avoid a vacuum. And then the nation is not entertained to drama, excessive drama, emotional drama. Takes away time, energy from useful applications to negative stuff. Let me be clear here. The incident that occurred at the airport and the attendant locations, as crime would be always, what you see on the surface could be deeper. But as it were, this crime took place on Zambian soil. On our soils as a country, Zambia. Purely, in my view, as a criminal act. And crimes will always take place where they are human beings. Remember, that's why the laws are created, is to address the transgressions of human beings and other things. So, to say that there will be no crime in this country when we are fighting crime is an absurdity. There will be crime in this country. The question is that how do we address the crime when it's occasioned? That's the question. What is our attitude to crime conducted on taking place in our motherland, our fatherland? the law triggers in. So I would like to indicate that once that crime took place, was noted that it has taken place, systems trigger in. Which law is offended? Who do you arrest? Always arrest people in a civil way. As a crime that is committed. 
And once that was triggered, I do believe arrests were made. You are the media, you are in the know. And when arrests are made, following a crime taking place, there is no reference or recognition of color of the person, nationality of a person. There is no reference to what language they speak. There is no reference to who they are friendly to. There is no reference to where they work. It is simply a person or persons that have transgressed the law. And the law, as I say, triggers in its processes. So I want to assist, encourage citizens of this country that when a law is broken, let's focus on the criminality. Let's not focus on other things and start speculating, drawing everybody into it. We will lose sight of what needs to be done. But equally when such a situation arises, citizens, all of us, media, report what is correct. If you are not sure what is correct to report, ask questions. Who do you ask the questions? The institutions on the ground. That is important. Then we remain professional. If you read stories that are meant to digress us from the case at hand, you may mislead yourself or misread your readers. And that could lose us the opportunity to broaden the network of criminals that need to be brought on board. Because now you start chasing the wind instead of chasing the real crime and criminals. I was following what was happening back home and I noted that tendency. I know sometimes falsehoods are very juicy and then we run on them. Even us as media platforms, when people come to present, because as I am told, I have seen footage of somebody who went to a radio station and said the plane is gone. The cash is gone. So now when you went there, you found the plane. So how is it that someone was able to do that, was able to do that? Maybe we must be more, be more careful, more responsible, so we feed the nation with the truth. Let me be very clear. Zambia is open for business. I proclaim to be the chief marketing officer, chief investment officer for this country. I said so during the opposition days. But this must not be confused with this invitation this environment for investments, trade, whatever it is, must not be misunderstood to mean that there's a safe haven for criminals. Local criminals who may be wearing a jacket or being civil servants, who may be wearing a jacket of working anywhere, including state house or the vice president's office, wearing the jacket of investors, gold traders, that room is not there. That space is not available. 
and as I said, local, us locals, colleagues in the region, international colleagues who we invite to invest in this country. We are inviting investors, people to do genuine legal business. Anyone who comes on the backdrop of that, and you a journalist know someone, say something to somebody, report. And the law enforcement agencies, the charter we have is law. That's our charter, it's the law. There is no investor there. There is a criminal. I hope I'm making my point clear. There is no investor there. There is a criminal. And once people are arrested, they have to go to court. The court then triggers, takes over with the support of the law enforcement agencies, with the support of then the prosecution now, DPP and others step in. And I've said before, Vice President, we don't want cases taking so long. Justice de delayed is justice denied. Full stop. I want to encourage the public, the people of Zambia, that social media technology is good, but we must check stories. We must not give stories legs to grow when they have no credibility, because you destroy yourselves along the way and lose sight of what you need to do. But the public, I invite the citizens of Zambia, residents of this country, those who live outside the country, since today we share stories almost real time, to play your part in the fight against corruption, to report any activities you believe are transgressing the law. I think the law enforcement agencies, we need to find genuine and protected hotlines I want to guide, provide the public with genuine and protected hotlines or platforms where the public can report what they believe may be transgression of the law. If those platforms are credible, citizens will, will utilize them. If they are not credible, citizens will shun them. Let's, let's build trust around there. When we do that, we will build society. I know where we are coming from as a country. And that's the reason that we need to fight illegalities including corruption. I know where we're coming from. You know where we're coming from. You know very well. Crime must be separated from politics. It's another message I'm giving. Let's not politicize everything. On a crime, we put, we smear politics around it. Then we lose sight. Then you take advantage now, whoever, to say, let me, let me rub X with this smell of cor corruption or crime. Let me name call somebody. For political reasons, Vice President, 
This is my chance now that there's a, a court come there. Let me name call someone who is my political opponent. Within the law enforcement agencies, let me fix my fellow director. Let me name call him or her. And what do you do? You send an anonymous message using platforms. You say, there are so many people involved here. That one and that one and that one. I have evidence. But you have none. What are you doing? You are now misleading the law enforcement agencies from going in the right direction. They start going all over the shop. If we allow them to do their work, they will get to that. It's nice to say, check that line. Rather than you saying, I have the evidence. I know. Because you want to fix a political opponent. You want to fix a workmate. You want to fix a fellow journalist. You'll be destroying yourself and society in the process. Absolutely no need to go that way. I know where we're coming from. I understand where we're coming from. And that's why we need to work as a team. And I invite my colleagues in the political parties that please support the fight against corruption, fight against crime. I'm happy for a political person, a member of a political party, civil society, to provide leads to the law enforcement agencies. Different from sending a scandalous note to say, I know and have evidence. Now you create a spiral of others setting you up and eventually the criminals escape. And we are left talking politics. There is no need to bring in a civil society identity in the fight against corruption. And I want to invite Transparency International Anyone, please cooperate with the law enforcement agencies. If for sure you know someone in the law enforcement agency is involved and is corrupt, provide information to another agency. Or indeed to anyone else, you believe will take it up seriously. As a citizen, we are all available for such conversations. Then we will succeed in fighting crime. Then we will succeed in fighting corruption. I know it's a tough call. I understand. Because it's got embedded in society. It became part of society. And many citizens, even those that may be in the new government, our government, will be aspiring to be what those they saw became flashing cash all over. That's not the culture we want in this country. To pollute the minds of young people. To tell young people you don't have to work in order to earn a good, decent life. You just have to do illegal things. We're destroying our children. Again, I look to the law enforcement. Move in quickly. When you get a lead from the public, take it serious. You know how to pursue it. But in fighting crime, I repeat, in fighting corruption, there is no politics. There should be no politics. If a member of any political party engages in crime, any political party, any civil society, any church, you're on your own. You engage in criminality, in corruption, you're on your own. I've said this several times. Is it just words? No. 
There are cases now where we have removed people from this government, including those appointed by this president. And we have no qualms about that. And we will not tire in taking action. I want to say to the people of Zambia, this president, this vice president, these ministers should not tire to do what is right for the people. Somebody said to me, send me a message that, Mr. President, are you not tired of pushing this issue? I said, what do you mean? The day I'm tired is the day that I'm not relevant to society anymore. There's nothing to tie about. I return to reporting transgressions when you face them, when you see them, when you experience them. But report correctly. Because otherwise it will be dogs chasing cats and cats chasing mice and mice is chasing grass and little insects. Then it's confusion. Over the years, we have lost the, the values that we are supposed to live with. Truthfulness. Detesting crime. Detesting corruption. And we are beginning to accommodate these negative vices. This government will not accommodate negative vices. This country should not do that. Let me flip the coin. In fighting corruption, in fighting crime, we should not commit crimes. In fighting corruption, in fighting criminality, we must not commit crimes. So if anyone is palpable, it means there's no one above the law. If you create, you commit crimes, or you are corrupt, you can't hide behind a political party. You can't hide behind the church. You can't hide behind ruling party, UPND. There is no room for you to hide there. You can't hide anywhere. That's a coin I flipped. So when you transgress in the process of fighting crime or corruption, the law, another law will be triggered. Isn't it? And the process will move on. So don't cry foul, citizens. Don't cry victim. No. Even there, you're on your own. We will work with the international law enforcement agencies, continue doing that. Already there's collaboration that's going on. By virtue of my office, I'm aware that there's collaboration going on. Those that bolted from the airport, those that ran away, we have invoked already. The institutions have invoked the global network of law enforcers. I've been out for a few days, but, and I used the opportunity when I was there to talk to my fellow colleagues what was happening at home here in Zambia, and that we needed their support. And invariably, without exception, Everyone said a crime in Zambia, and it takes a regional dimension, international dimension, it affects all of us. And so I want to encourage law enforcement agencies, invoke those networks. If you are facing problems, talk to us, we'll talk to our colleagues there, you will get the support. Do not be intimidated by the fact that somebody is foreign, somebody is powerful. I don't understand when people say, no, no, no. That individual is untouchable, is powerful. What does that mean? 
you afraid? Are you compromised? If you are afraid, we will help you to gain courage. If you are compromised, we will remove you. It's as simple as that. But you have the machinery of government and the global community to help you fight crime. So there is no issue of cross-border. Someone has crossed the border. Where have they gone? Have they, have they gone to heaven? Only where God is, we can't reach. In today's world, only where God is, we can't reach. Where a human being is, we'll reach. By a stroke of a phone call. So there's no hiding place. Crime does not pay. Corruption does not pay. Eventually you damage even your children and your great-grandchildren. Their name will be damaged. No one will trust them to do business with. They carry a label on their foreheads, on their backs. That this one is a child of a corrupt or lawbreaker. This one is a child of a drug dealer. You have encumbered your children even before you give them a chance to be somebody in society. Let me close by saying this government who uphold the rule of law no matter what happens. Vice President, I've whispered to colleagues since I came in last night, the relevant ones, that what happened at the airport, we commend the law enforcement agencies. We commend citizens that were late. The question is that there could have been situations where planes came like that, transacted, and left. It's good that this scam has been exposed. But uh, tied to that, I have asked a question myself. How did the other plane taxi on the runway? What was the communication? Who gave people who went on the runway yellow jackets? That's a question. Where do they work? What systems are there to allow a facilitation? I'm here saying that we will ensure that those two are brought to the table. There's a failure of supervision. While we commend what was done, but there's a failure of supervision there. I am told there was negotiations for some time. I will not dwell into the facts of the case, because that's not right for me to do. But institutionally, we must check who is responsible for those movements. How did it happen? Which individuals were involved? What role did they play? Everybody will be reached out. And I want to assure the people of Zambia, by closing, criminals will be there, but the environment has changed. The leadership has changed. What you were able to do some time back, you will not be able to do it. You will not be allowed to do it. You are on your own. I want to assure the people of Zambia that we were elected to do what is right. We were elected not to observe and look the other way, see and look the other way. We were elected to do what is right. Let's work as a country to clean up our society. And we should do it without fear. I don't know why people fear things. Many of you fear death. 
There's only one who controls life. God. He knows when each one of us is going. Even those of you who are afraid, he knows when you are going. So you may still want to be alive, but if God says, today is your day, you go. So why are you afraid? Just do your work. Do your work. The rest leave it to God. If some of us were afraid of death, we wouldn't be sitting here as heads of state. I would never. I would have probably jumped to another country and ran away. And when colleagues were saying, you better move, you'll be killed, I said, what do you mean? You can die in the shower. Enjoying your shower, you fall off and you die. So what are you afraid of? If you are tired of working in your institution, you are a law enforcer, put in a letter, res resign. Go. Someone, 20 million people, someone else will come and do that work. That's the way it works to serve the public. So my assurance to the people of Zambia is that crime will be fought. We're going to invest a bit more now going forward, looking at the lapses here and there including technology, will invest a bit more. I think citizens deserve that. They do deserve that. But citizens must know that things have changed and will not let them down. Fear is not what we should live with. The Bible is very clear. Fear not. Unless there's something you know. Which you are guilty of. If you're not guilty of anything, what is the fear for? Journalists, I want to encourage you to do your work. I want you to do what you were trained to do. That's my encouragement to you. What you were trained to do, to report factually, isn't it? To be professional. To also have a system of counter-checking, isn't it? With social media, you can run a story that leads you into a hole and into a criminality. Do what you were trained to do. Help society. All of us must help society make it better. Focus our attention on the economy, on addressing many, many issues. I will have a session with you to deal with many, many issues, because I have a team working on that. And we'll give you the truth as it is. So let's have a date on that. But for today, we stay with these issues. Rule of law. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellence. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you, Excellence, for this kind message, strong message to our citizens through our colleagues in the media. And like you said, yes, indeed, we were arriving late in the night. And you know, when we were, I was interacting with a few colleagues outside, they were saying, are you sure the president is around? Uh, we expect him to be, to soon be in uh, Angola for a certain site. And you know, uh, you know, this, uh, he, he, he told us it's no more party after party. It's work after work, and um, even after this event, obviously you will still see us somewhere else uh, doing some other uh, 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 works. And um, what we'll do is, in the interest of time, because there are other engagements somewhere else, I think we can I'll ask a few colleagues in the media um, for points of clarification. 
you know, clarifications around these subjects. And uh, who may want to ask, you put up your hand, obviously, and then uh, you come over here. Um, I can see a hand already there. You, you can come. And uh, do you have another person? You can just line up somewhere here. Yeah, you can come also. So obviously you have your name and where you are coming from. And please, let's the profession. Let's stick to the subject. He has already assured us that there will be another session on another theme uh, as we go. Thank you, Kamai. Uh, good morning, Your Excellency. Good morning. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Oswat Kafuanka from Prime TV. Uh, in your delivery, Mr. President, you talked about uh, issues to do with government create, uh, creating a platform uh, for citizens to report crime. Um, yesterday, um, of course, other platforms and us as Prime TV had been following up uh, the same uh, issue that has been in the media. and. Uh, 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 a Lusaka businessman was uh, detained uh, as of last night was at Kabwata uh, police station and the lawyers claim that he was uh, he's a whistleblower. So my question to you is uh, what measures is government going to put in place to ensure that uh, these whistleblowers are protected? Thank you. Good morning Mr. President. Morning. My name is uh, Matsauso Mukwaya from the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation. Mr. President, you have spoken that we have started engagement with the international community to fight, to fight such crimes. Are you able to speak to some of the specifics of what this collaboration uh, involves? What exactly does Just it repeat do? This. You have noted that we have started collaborating with the international community yes. to fight such crimes. Are you able to speak to some specifics of what exactly does this uh, collaboration involve? Thank you. Got you. Nice house. Do you have another person? Yeah. Any other? Okay. I think we can go. We can attack with these two for now. Thank you. Also, I thank you very much for, for that question. Ah. Yes. Thank you for that question. Um, I think the platforms are essential. I do know in the past there used to be numbers, just as an example, that ACC will give you a number, publicize that number, DEC will give you a number, the police would give you a number. What I'm suggesting is to recognize that technology has changed, there could be other platforms other contacts, remember I said credible contacts, eh? protected contacts, also what? so that when you call that contact, you are protected. When you give the message, you are also able to give your identity in a manner that is confidential. And that identity will not be abused. That's, there, therein lies the issue of building professionalism in the institutions. Very important. To protect whistleblowers. And if there's a weakness in the, in the law around whistleblowers' protection, we should enhance that law. But let's stick with platforms, because that was your question. So that's my example. That's the example I'm giving. And when the call or contact is received from the law enforcement agencies, is treated in a confidential manner. I don't have to teach or to provide a lecture here. The institutions are there. I think in due course, they will be able to engage with the public to be able to provide what I'm saying. I've only given a suggestion. A businessman was arrested and his lawyers are saying he was a whistleblower. 
this is competent enough. I have trust in the leadership of the DEC, and I think US citizens need to give that institution trust. The changes we're making in these institutions should lead us to enhance trust and confidence of these institutions to handle matters like that to assess whether this is a whistleblower or not. Is this a whistleblower or not? I will not say much. That competence lies in the institutions that are handling these cases. I don't want to say something to jeopardize the fair treatment of any one of those who have been arrested, any one of the accused. It's not my, my intention today, but my intention is to say crime will be fought directly, openly, or even when it's smeared with Vaseline. Sometimes criminals smear you with Vaseline. More importantly, they give you the most expensive perfume so that the smell changes. That's not for me to determine. It's for the agencies. They are listening. That's a job. I don't send instructions to the agencies. This president doesn't work like that. <laughs> Masters, oh no, Oswald. When I was in Angola, I read one of the statements from my colleagues somewhere, opponents, saying no plane lands without the clearance of the president, state house. I'm sure you saw it, isn't it? Ah, you are shy now. I'm sure you read that statement where someone emphatically says, when that plane landed, it means state house. Who do they mean at state house? It's me. Maybe it's the vice president. I hope you are aware that the presidency is the president, the vice president's office is part of the office of the president. Cabinet office is part of the office of the president. So they could have meant that this presidency here and the people around state house or the vice president and the people around her or secretary of the cabinet because that's office of the president in case we are not aware. Or indeed the other offices of the president. Essentially meaning the presidency authorizes. It doesn't work like that. We have civil aviation. In the past, maybe it worked like that. Now it doesn't work like that. They are institutions. If you want to call those as the presidents, maybe you're right. But this president, this vice president, is not our duty to know who is landing, when, who is taking off, what are they carrying? No, the institutions that should be mandated to do that. Please, citizens, understand that. Also, so I want to say to you, the presidency doesn't directly get involved in who is landing, what are they carrying, when are they taking off? No. I'm aware in my time in opposition, I was not allowed to use the airport. That's gone. Now the airports are available. The roads are available. As by law. Remember? Rule of law again. Airports are public places. But still, it does not mean airports must be used for criminality. I hope you understand me. But this president doesn't get involved. Unless there's a trigger that requires me as commander-in-chief to invoke that. That I'll do, but there's been no opportunity or situation for that. So, Oswald, let's leave that speculation. Lawyers are speculating. If I say anything, I'll be speculating. Let the law enforcement agencies do their job. And as evidence comes out, some of these things will shock you, eh? The very people who are pointing a finger or fingers at other people 
may be the ones that are involved. You got me? Because this thing on Monday, it was, uh, no, State House. This one, they even started drawing, you know, uh, graphs, and maybe because I like graphs, they wanted to use graphs as well, and, and uh, pictorial presentations. Hmm, maybe that was digressional. So, also, what? Let's wait. Let's wait and see. Everything that goes up comes down, isn't it? That's the law of gravity. Everything that goes up comes down. Master also. Collaboration with others. Such as what? I'm sure you're aware of an institution, an institution called Interpol. You're aware of that? That's what I'm talking about. To exchange information, there are protocols that govern exchange of information. Intelligence is another platform. We have to be open and factual about it. Intelligence is another line. Police, Interpol is another. Just to give you, an, you know, a side issue, Vice President, where I went, we got Sadiq to back our citizen to be the head of Interpol. Am I right? Who is the Minister of Home Affairs? Is there? Yes. Master also, as a small digression, this government has made a decision that it will promote citizens, including you, to get international jobs. We will stand behind you. If there is an international press union, which I'm sure there is, isn't it? The same way you collaborate. Al Jazeera gives you stories. French media gives you stories. BBC gives you stories. That's the same here, security and crime. But the, the side story I'm giving you, only yesterday we lobbied all the Saudi countries, 16 of them, to support your own brother, Ms. Mayor. I won't tell you the name. As a candidate to take over the leadership of Interpol. That's a side issue. I'm only reinforcing the existence of Interpol. Those are the platforms I'm talking about. Bilateral platforms, this government will have security understandings with neighbors to exchange information. You are aware that we have brought back into our countries two helicopters. I don't know if the second one has come back. When? Yeah. When? Yeah. Nice also. Two helicopters are associated with criminality. One has already arrived. I think it arrived a month or so ago. The second one is coming. How were we able to do that? Collaboration. Because the helicopters were taken into a foreign country. I would have said commend the UPND government, but no, it's our duty. I am sure you are aware that this president has gone out to create stronger relationships with neighboring countries. Are you aware of that? These relationships are brought to bear when we need to invoke them, such as on those two helicopters, such as this case. That's what I'm saying. That's also. Remember I said, if you are hiding where God is, we can't reach you. But if you are hiding where human beings go, we will reach you. Just like that. So you can't be a criminal here and jump into another country and expect that you have a safe haven. Kulibe. It's a matter of time. Sometimes we know where people are. But we remain civil. Sometimes even here locally, we know they are hiding. The police know. Somebody was not going to court, jumping bail. 
And the police knew where he was. And I commend the police. Because where he was, it was not necessary to create a story and news around it. My view was that sooner or later they will come out. And they came out. I won't say more. And then the law takes its course. Then you accuse law enforcers and the politicians that they are after me. No, it's the law that is after you. You want the law not to be after you. Don't commit crimes. From previous governments, from this government, I do believe future governments, do not commit a crime. Work hard to raise your children. This government will support you. Finish. Indeed, I'm going. Hmm. I think I've answered the two questions. Director of Ceremonies, I've answered the two questions. I will take a third one, if there's any. The last one. Okay. Yep. Madam, they come. Especially from a lady. Yes, indeed. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Afternoon. My name is Rodan Vola from Diamond TV. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, there has been um, a sharp reaction from the public on the ongoing God scam. You, as the Commander in Chief, what steps have you taken to ensure that there's transparency in the ongoing investigations? Uh, because some people feel uh, some uniformed personnel are not to be trusted. Thank you. I want to believe coming from a lady, that, was, that could be our last question for today. As we have heard, the President will be offering us some of these platforms quite often from now onwards. I think, Mr. President, we can tackle this one. Yes. I'm aware of your other engagements elsewhere. Yes. Then we, we move. Thank you. Rhoda, thank you very much. And I'm glad we encourage someone else to ask the question, such as the one you have. In order to assure the nation, you, the nation, and the world, Zambia is not a safe haven for criminality. Zambia is not a safe nation, is not a hiding place for corruption. No. Zambia is a place to do business. Genuine business, legal business. Zambia is a country to live in and will work hard to protect you legally. Zambia welcomes tourists. I hope, Rhoda, you know we have removed visas now for a lot of countries. And you go to Rwanda now, Mfue, you go to Livingstone. The tourist numbers have increased. Talk to two operators, talk to airlines, talk to anybody. Vice President, I'm very delighted that the police changes we're making are working already. Occupancies have gone up. More of our young people have been employed, rather. That's what we intend to do. And that's what we're doing. But this country, the flip side of that, this country is not a safe haven for any criminality. Let me go now to your issue. I've set the background. This country, this commander-in-chief, will not allow men and women in uniform to use the badge to commit crime. Let me share something you didn't know. We were having a lot of traffic congestion where senior government officials will stop traffic to give them where they were doing that outside the law i have put my foot down you may have not paid attention you get to see that stuff talk to somebody the laws are clear who stops traffic if there's an emergency who does it so we are basically clamp, clamping down rather on lawlessness. Sometimes it's not crime. 
per se, but it becomes criminality, it becomes an offense to the law if we are doing some things outside the law. An emergency is an emergency. If there's an ambulance, yes. We all know those provisions. But people can't say, I am the minister, therefore I'm stopping the traffic from moving so I can pass. I've said to these ministers in cabinet, no, ladies and gentlemen, you will not do that. You used to see people driving in the opposite direction of the road. I'm sure you remember. Sometimes we forget easily. That was normal in Lusaka. You see that, tip somebody. We will not allow that. Whether road it comes from a senior government official, a military person, a police officer, correctional service officer, no. All of this is to retain, restore the rule of law. That was the subject today, isn't it? Rule of law, order. I'm glad you have raised this issue. The law enforcement agents are sitting here. They will clamp down on anyone. Remember when I began talking, I said, the law does not recognize your dress. Maybe I didn't say the dress, but I said your height, your language, you speak, which chief you come from. And there's a tendency now, somebody breaks the law, they rush to the traditional leader where they come from. No, Munikambi Rileko. Chita commit crime, you didn't go to the Mfum. The Munidandis are in committing a crime. Equally, the uniform does not stop anyone, rather. Does not exonerate anybody from the law. I hope I'm right. I do know I'm right. There are things that men and women in uniform are allowed to do by law. So in a nutshell, as Commander-in-Chief, I have delivered that message and I'm monitoring. After all, the most disciplined people must be men and women in uniform, in society, isn't it? And I have great belief in our commanders, all of them, Army, ZAF, National Service, Police, Correctional Services, other systems, I have every belief. I appointed. If I didn't believe in them, I would have removed them. It's as simple as that. That's the law. So, but they know, they understand, and they are professionals. They know what the Constitution says, they know what the secondary laws say, they know what they are allowed to do, what they are not allowed to do. In a case of emergence, hmm, yes. If there's instability in the country, yes. But the Commander-in-Chief will provide the direction. But not anything else. Rhoda, I want to encourage you and others here and the citizens to wait and see when this case unfolds. Just wait and see. But to be blunt, Rhoda, I think there's some word you're looking for me. If a policeman got involved in this crime, they'll be arrested. If a soldier got involved in this crime, they will be arrested. I guess the crime you're talking about now, and the other crimes. I must drill it. If someone wearing a cover of a civil service anywhere, including State House, they got involved, they will be arrested. I've extended my answer to your question to reinforce the point that the law is above, is supreme. I know there was lawlessness in this country. I know. You know. But we're working hard to stamp it out. But I must also say to you, Rhoda, old habits die hard. Eh? People emulate. I want to be like that one. I want to drive a hammer. You want to drive a hammer? Work hard within the law. If you, you drive a hammer because you are breaking the law because you are doing corrupt things, you may never see the day you enjoy the hammer. The hammer will remain outside and you will be in prison. How does that help you? 
Some of these aspirations are really sad. We were brought up to work hard. We were brought up to be disciplined. We were brought up in a Christian nation. Where have we, why have we lost our values? Who do we believe in as a nation? Teaching our children that you don't have to work, you can drive a hammer, you can drive a Rolls Royce, you can drive a vehicle without working. Who is funding that? Certainly, if what you aspire to drive is funded by the taxpayer illegally, the law will catch up with you. It's a matter of time. Thank you, Rhoda. Thank you very much.